Hi, welcome to my chord uh, melody uh, guitar tutorial for Crystal Silence by uh, Chick Corea. So um, what I'm trying to do with these uh, uh, videos and recordings is to give you as much information and value and uh, guitar theory and history uh, as I, as I possibly can. So what I call no holes barred. So I, I show you all my secrets from years and years and decades of, of playing and teaching um, to help you to be a, a better guitar player. So in the back of my mind, I'll be thinking about the um, Chick Corea uh, Return to Forever album you know, the, with the blue cover with the seagull. I guess that's uh, Chick Corea, uh, Stanley Clark, Joe Farrell, Erto, Flora Purim, I think that's how you say her name. I think that's everybody on that album. But it's a great album. Um, so that's what I'll be thinking about. So I'll start off just doing a um, an analysis of my uh, of my uh, chord melody arrangement, and here here goes. So right off the bat, uh, okay. So you have, and then you're going to go into like. I'm calling an A minor 9 chord, so that's just basically a C major 7th chord, C, E, G, B, in first inversion with the A in the bass. And then I'm just going to put some arpeggios in here. Okay, next melody is going to be this D note, and then I'm going to do really the same device. It's It, it doesn't look the same on guitar, but this is a, a G major 7th chord, G, B, D, F sharp in the middle, with the low E. So, so this device here, A minor 9, C major 7 on top with an A bass is the exact same principle as this chord. G major 7th with, uh, with an E in the bass. And, uh, and then I'm just going to put in these kind of, you know, uh, sim simple arpeggios. Okay, B, C, D. Now on the original lead sheet and in, in, in the song, uh, Da, da, da. So sometimes I'll play it like that, but a lot of times, because I like this chord, I'll go up to the E as my melody. So that's a chord I use a lot in my arrangements, F, C, E, A, B, E. So major seventh, uh, like sharp 11. Ba, okay, then here, uh, A. So a lot of times I'll do like a double pull off there. Okay. Okay. So then, as that's ringing, I'm going to try to get this chord down. So, so that's uh, what I often refer to in my videos as a hinge bar. So, if I want, if I want to get that E to ring, so I have a, I have a B minor seventh chord in the middle, B F sharp A D. But, but I want that E to ring because that's the melody. the regular E7 chord. So so I could have done something like, instead of doing the hinge bar, I could have done uh, this. And then just made that A to G sharp. And that's a nice sound too. And I, I've definitely played this song this way over the over the years. So what I'm doing with these videos is I'm, I'm going through my actual written arrangement. Um, but I will sometimes throw in uh, other uh, other aspects of, of how I uh, sometimes will play this song. Okay, next chord, a B flat major seven, but it's an E melody. So B flat major seven, E melody. G G C E. All right, I don't I don't remember if that's on the original uh, sheet, but that, I, I kind of like that sound. Now. Now, when you're playing chord melody style, you have to really be thinking about where you're coming from and where you're going to. So right off the bat here, if I want to get this A minor, uh, this next A minor chord, I need to land on my fourth finger. Okay, so... Yeah, and, 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 and I'm not doing anything fancy with these arpeggios. I'm just doing just kind of basic uh, 16th note arpeggios. Here, uh, B, B, F sharp, A, E, uh, 
know, C triad with a D bass, a D bit melody. Okay, now here what I decided to do, it's uh, the lead sheet calls for a D7 sus4. Uh, I, I wanted all the chords to sound consistent, so I just went with... Um, and I decided that throwing in the D bass didn't really sound right to me, so that, that's how the arrangement ended up. Okay, then we have an E7 uh, flat 9. So the typical device that I'll use is uh, I'll, I'll play a diminished seventh chord on top, G sharp, uh, D, F, B. Okay, there's a couple of different things that I'll do here. Uh, sometimes I'll do a, a quick mute. Uh, so where I'm just kind of lightly muting that uh, fifth string as I'm string, uh, going through there. Or I might just do a, uh, like a quick grace note. And you'll see that a lot if you watch my arrangements on, on YouTube. I do that device all the time where I do the, the bass note a little bit before the rest of the chord. Okay, then I, as I was getting ready to do this video, I thought, oh, there's something different I can do here. So, so a lot of times what I'll do, I'll play it like that and then I'll get off that note before I get into these ar 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 arpeggios, I thought to myself, well, what I could do is... Um That's kind of tricky there. And then I can hold that uh, that melody. So I'll probably do it both ways, because that's just something I literally just discovered just, you know, like an hour or so ago as, as I was setting up for this. So I might sometimes throw that in and sometimes just and then kind of come off of that. So I guess to my mind, how I disguise that is um, I, I jump, I put, I put that low A in. So, so that maybe disguises the fact that I've, I've uh, gotten off of that note. Okay, so then we have a, uh, a group of arpeggios here. Just, you know, just, just a standard arpeggio. And then this chord right here, um, B flat major seven sharp 11. very fond of throwing in throwing in these um, artificial harmonics uh, one of the things I was when I was getting ready here I, I thought well maybe I can do something like that kind of just sweep across like that okay okay so then uh, that leads us to like this big run and this is just uh, a very simple device that I've I've used over the years uh, kind of like one of my favorite speed looks okay so once I get to there I'm gonna do this device where I play every note of a scale So, so that's a, uh, that's an A minor to a B flat uh, major seven sharp eleven. So that's basically kind of Phrygian of F. So this is just basically a descending uh, or uh, F major scale A B flat C D E F G A B flat C D E F G A B flat C D. So once I've climbed up here. So, so every every three notes is going to be played two times. It's just that I elongate the melody, um, and then and then what I'll usually what I'll do in performance is I'll I'll do an accelerando as I'm coming down that scale. Next string. Next string. Next string. Next string. And then do do do. Okay, so. I could just very well just end on that A note and then add in my A for the next uh, arpeggio sequence. But what I've decided to do here as I'm coming off of this, uh, and then I'm right there for the A minor. And then I can do kind of a, and I've, I've talked about that in other videos. So, so, so what I'm doing there is I'm doing a, artificial harmonic I'm going across the the fifth fret so 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 technically I'm only really getting the top two notes as, as artif uh, artificial harmonics but it almost sounds like the whole chord is it's kind of a, a deceptive te technique yeah you're getting a, kind of a couple dead notes and then you're getting the notes to ring 
Okay, I think what I'll do next is I'm just going to play through that whole first section, uh, but I'm going to just change it a little bit rhythmically. Um, one device I like to use is, is this. I'm not really, really sure even what you call that. So, so this is just something that a lot of a lot of jazz players will, will do these kind of back rakes. So, so to my mind, it's almost like your fingers are like kind of like a paintbrush. So how my my this first segment of my finger is is kind of bending. Yeah, right now I'm using a, an Ernie Ball Prodigy pick. I really like these picks a lot. They're great on a nylon guitar. It's, a, it's, it's pointy, but whatever kind of material is, is used, uh, it's very, very soft sounding. Okay, I think what I'll do here is I'm just going to move the, the microphone out of the way uh, briefly while I do this first section, first page, what I just did, uh, you know, kind of, uh, kind of like a perf perfor uh, performance. Okay. Okay, so notice how I, um, I, I did use the, my, kind of my more standard fingering. Uh, maybe next time through, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll do something a little bit different. Okay, then it goes back to the beginning. You know, this, uh, and then sometimes what I'll do is I'll, I'll put in, instead of doing, sometimes I'll just kind of jump octaves and I'll just throw in a natural harmonics. So, so maybe you'll like that sound, maybe not. Maybe that sounds too weird. Here, I'll, I'll use the D melody. I'll use a little different fingering here. So, so I would call that discrete fingering for that B minor 7th chord. So you can do uh, hinge bar, or you can do discrete fingering. So if I do discrete fingering... So instead of doing like an E7 chord like this, I can add in that 9 there. All right, so that's a device I like to use a lot. That's kind of like an old, like John McLaughlin would do something like that. You know, Michael is beyond. Uh, he does a lot of those kind of fast tremolos. Now, there's a kind of a tricky thing I like to do here. Yeah, I, I like to do that device and instead of going da -da -da. now the, the thing is if you're playing lead guitar that would be fine but when you're playing chord melody you want to end up on that so that you're ready for this next chord so if I'm getting into that um, so I'll do that one more time for you because that is a really nice move to be thinking a little bit ahead I'll come in from that B flat chord. Okay, and that's going to lead to the second page of the arrangement uh, where uh, Chick Corea does a D, D minor, D minor 9. Oh, sorry, so D minor 9. Here, uh, okay, th this was kind of an interesting discovery when I first came up with this arrangement, you know, many, many years ago. 
So, so the the lead sheet call, it calls for a seven a sharp nine chord, but the, there's a D melody. So look what the top of this is. See how this is like the Hendrix chord, okay? But obviously, if I tried to do that, I don't have a finger ready for for this D. So, so I I, I did like the Hendrix chord without that extra note. So if I can't getting into this, and there's another example where. I, I can't, I don't want to land there. I need, I need to land on my fourth finger. And notice what I did there. So this is, this is something when you're dealing with these big stretches, because you, you'll see me do these a lot, these big stretches. So what I'm doing is I'm putting my fourth finger down first, and then I'm reaching back. So I think that might be a little bit easier than, than, the, than trying to put the chord down first. So, so you have to kind of see what works for you. So if I'm here... I just changed the, the melody a little bit because I'm, I'm just sort of hearing something that goes up the scale. Right, there's that same device I did earlier, so for that leading into that E7 sharp nine chord. So once again, if I want to do a quick hammer pull off or whatever, I need to land on four. So I can, it's fourth finger, so I can get to this next. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm really fond of, of especially well, a song in, in A minor with the low A, D, and E open. I really like to put those open strings in because it, that, that way you can let the open ring while you're, um, you know, playing some some kind of melodic thing. So, okay, then here G7 sus four. So, so you can kind of think of that G7 sus four. You can kind of think of that as a D minor pentatonic. Scale, so uh, I know I talk a lot about those. So, like, let's say you were doing like a riff with G minor, se a G seven. A little tangent here. Or if you had a bass player. Boom, 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 boom. I'm just using different pieces. Boom, boom. the G minor uh, pentatonic to uh, realize that chord. Okay, so back to the arrangement, G7 sus4. Guess the melody, okay. And then I'm gonna go into A minor here. So many, many years ago, I saw Jimmy Bruno uh, up at Penn State. And uh, he, he, does a, he does a device kind of like this, or he, he does these really fast, really fast pedal tones. Uh, Tony Iommi in, uh, uh, what's that one song? Off the first album, he does something like this. I'm not sure if he does hybrid picking or not. So a lot of, a lot of modern players do hybrid picking. I just never found that that worked for me, mostly because I don't keep long nails. So I kind of look at this as more of like a picking exercise. So, so the basic strategy here is I'm going to play... A harmonic minor, but then I'm going to use uh, the A and e, uh, A and E on top, so it's like kind of triplets. Kind of almost like a like a flamenco or, or or Spanish kind of thing. So the thing that makes this challenging, down on the melody, and then up up on the next two. So let me just kind of read through this here. I could have very easily just landed on this A minor chord. So what I just chose to do here, after I get finished with this whole run here, let's see, I'll go from... Right, and then I, 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 I use that device a lot. So even though if you, uh, if you looked at this arrangement, you would see it as a, as a, a chord, a, a, just a chord, a, a, 
uh, dotted uh, half note. A lot of times I just start ar arpeggiated just with, a, with a, like almost like it has like a j uh, squiggly line next to it on it. Okay, so I think what I'll do there is I'll come in. I, I actually, I'll just do the whole, the whole, whole. I'll move the microphone out of the way, and then I'll, I'll go back as if I'm doing it the second time. Take the second ending up to the bridge and kind of do that as a performance also. I'll talk a little bit more about that device I'm using there. So, so notice what I'm doing. I'm kind of, uh, well, of course, I'm reading the arrangement because I don't have it memorized. But I'm also kind of dropping my shoulder and dropping my thumb pretty low on the neck here because I'm because because these are pretty big stretches. And notice what I'm doing. I'm doing what, what I call a cross fingering. So for me to hold this down. Now I'm also doing something that's kind of subtle. Maybe you're picking up on this. So technically, the way I wrote the I wrote the arrangement as just these two notes, but I'm barring here. So that way, if I accidentally if I accidentally hit that next string, it's not a big deal because because this is this is kind of a tricky picking. So so let me just kind of do that. I'm gonna do that that last little section there, but I'm going to just be a little bit more um, vigorous with my picking, and I'm just gonna kind of purposely maybe bump into the next string so you can kind of hear what you can kind of hear what that'll sound like okay something like that so you can see i, I actually changed it a little bit I, I did more of almost like a back rake okay so now let's go into the into the bridge so what I do, what I have written here is I have a bunch of artificial harmonics. So I think what I'll do is I'll play the bridge first without the hard, artificial harmonics, and we'll talk about, about those. So you have a D, okay, and then I just have a backwards arpeggio, and those will eventually be harmonics. Okay, A, A minor 7, backwards arpeggio. Okay, so keep in mind that whenever I do these arpeggios, they'll eventually be natural harmonics. There's that B flat, major seven, but it's I, I'm making it sharp eleven. Okay, now, now I'm going to do a kind of a tricky thing here. Uh, I talk a lot about these hinge bars. So, you know, so, 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 so I'm, I'm holding the B flat major seven in the middle with this great finger because I want to get that E sharp eleven clamping down the bar to get the next F note. Okay, the F minor 7th chord. And then the bass chord arpeggio. E flat. Now here, C major 7th chord, what I decided to do here, rather than doing C major 7 like that, I'm uh, using the G in the bass. Would eventually be uh, natural uh, artificial harmonics. That's G minor nine. Then 
B7 uh, sharp five arpeggio, which is basic arpeggio through the chord. B7. And here I decided to use a, with a discrete fingering rather than using a bar. You could probably do that as a bar also. Right, and there's that same E note again. So rather than playing this chord, which I could have done, it, it, that, that would still sound good. I just, I'm just doing this uh, uh, B minor, uh, kind of a B minor 7 or B minor 11, whatever you everyone to call that. Da, da. So that's kind of an SF for a very guitar-esque kind of sound. Right, where, you, where you're, uh, you know, where you're keeping, where you're doubling, doubling the note. And then here's just a regular E7 chord. And a lot of times I'll do some kind of slide. And that will lead you into the second, uh, second A section. Okay, uh, so I think what I'll do next before I do the performance version, uh, I'll just talk a little bit about these um, artificial, harmo uh, artificial harmonics. So, so just very, very simple, very simple chords I'm using here. I'm using a D, A minor, B flat. But the thing that makes it interesting to my mind is I'm doing these artificial harmonics. So this is something I practiced a lot in, in, in college. I would just sit around and just pick whatever chord I knew, F major seven, and just trace out trace out the chord. Now, what you might find, depending on the situation, you might find you have to choke up on your pick a little bit, so you're not bang so you're not banging into the uh, the guitar neck very much. So that's just that just takes practice. Okay, so uh, I'll just do each of the uh, harmonics. So the D chord, artificial harmonic backward. A minor seven, backwards. All right, see, so all you have to do, you just have to, uh, so I'm, I'm holding my pick between these two fingers, uh, between these two fingers, and then I'm just extending out my first finger, picking, be pick, picking behind that. Uh, have you ever around any, any guitar players who are kind of new to the game or, 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 or around good? When they see you do this, see how you can't you can't really see me you can't really see me picking. So it's kind of a fun thing when when when, when somebody sees it for the first time, they're like, "What the heck are you do? how are you doing that? How are you just touching the string?" Because they because they can't see you picking behind the string. It's kind of a fun little little thing. Okay, here's your B flat major seven. So here I'm going three. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just doing a little bit different kind of arpeggiation there. Okay, then uh, F minor seven, just right up the right up the uh, the chord, and then back down, E flat note. Here's that uh, C major seven chord. I'm just, just skipping strings. Three, two. I'm just doing it in double, just to make it more interesting. So D. Okay, this is G minor G minor nine, right up the chord. B7 sharp five, just right up the chord. B7, right up the chord. And then here, just to make things a little bit easier. So I, I didn't do artificial harmonics there. Okay, so, so what I'll do is I'll go back to I guess just for giggles, I'll, I'll come in on I'll come in on this this little part here. Um, where it does the, uh, that kind of Spanish thing. I'll play through the bridge with the um, artificial harmonics and then I'll continue on with the rest of the arrangement.
Okay, so back to the second A section. Um, so I think it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much exactly the same as the first A section. So D, D. There's that C divide to A minor. And then that G major 7th chord in the middle. F major 7, sharp 11, so. Yeah, so when you're doing this chord, you just have to make sure that you're not bumping bumping in. So you do have to kind of get, you know, get the thumb. So the rule of, the rule of thumb is that when you want to do something with discrete fingering and you want to be really clean, you, you want to have your thumb kind of low on the neck. And that's why classical players talk a lot about that. Because for, for a blues player, you don't you, you can wrap your thumb and, and you can you know, use your thumb for certain chords. But for a certain for a classical and more intricate chording, it is good to you know, for stretches to have your, your thumb lower on, on the neck. All right, that's all the same. I know, so I did there, there I just went 4-2-4. Four, four. I, but I could have gone... Um, D7 sus4. So, so, that, so that's that same principle I was talking about with the G7 chord. So G7 uh, sus4 is also a type of pentatonic, a D, D minor pentatonic. Right, and, if, and if you watch enough of my videos, you know I, I'm a big fan of using these pentatonic chords. So in this in this instance, I'm, it's a it's a D7 chord. But I just never liked the sound of that of that D, so so I'm just using the top part of an A minor pentatonic. All right, so that A minor pentatonic would would function as as a D as a D. Doo -doo. All right, that's kind of a cool. That's sort of a John McLaughlin kind of sound. Kind of something he would he would use. All right, uh, I digress. Um, let's see, we're back to where, I, where was I? Okay, so I'm at this uh, this kind of descending bass line, Do, uh, ascending bass line. That's, I guess that's how it is. Like the, the bass and the piano would come up in the range. Here's that E7 um, flat nine, then the A minor with the arpeggios. Okay, so then for the very last time, this is like toward the end of the arrangement. Rather than doing this, uh, I wanted to try to get a more bass sound, so I'm just going to do some, once again, this kind of string skipping. Is I could have done the device that I just discovered earlier, where I can just go something like, and that will lead me into the into the the a, uh, holding the A minor chord. Okay, so since I already did that first section, I don't I don't feel like I need to do it again. So so now I'll just talk about the about the ending. So ending is pretty simple. Uh, I'm just doing like uh, various pieces of an A minor or A minor ninth and a B flat major seventh or B flat major seven, a sharp eleven, and I'm just going to climb up with different inversions. So, so the first one, A minor, right, and that's a it's just good arpeggio study. And uh, I guess if you're a finger style player, this would probably work pretty well, finger style. Or on a classical guitar. Um, okay, so back to A minor. Here's the B flat uh, major seven. Uh, sharp, I'm calling it sharp eleven. So F E. Right, so, so there's nothing too too extraordinary about that. So so then I'm, so so then my next chord is going to be 
Uh, I'm just going to kind of climb up the melody, just a C major 7th chord. But I have an A in the bass, so it's essentially like an A minor 9th. Okay, next two chords are the same, so I want to climb up my melody, so B flat, sus 2, or add 2. I think, I think Jimmy liked that chord a lot. Did that one uh, a lot, and then with, without the, he also did it where he's kind of muting that string. Okay, so back to the range of B, so B flat. Okay, then the C at at nine. Okay, now just regular B flat major seven chord. So notice I'm just I'm just kind of pedaling on that A. It kind of gives you an interesting kind of sound, like uh, like maybe a Phrygian sound. Move up two frets. So you notice those two chords. So this, so the B flat add nine and the C add nine are the same. B flat major seven, C major seven are the same. Okay, so the, so there's a couple more chords. So then I'm gonna I'm I'm going back to this chord here, but I'm using a B flat major seven, B flat D F A first inversion. The arpeggios are exactly the same, and then same chord here, C major seven with the A. Okay, now uh, I've changed this arrangement over the years. I'm going to do my old arrangement first, and then I'll do I'll do what I have on the a page here. So B flat major seventh, uh, right across here. So depending on what kind of guitar you're playing, I, I think I changed this arrangement because I, I think maybe I was doing it on a classical guitar with less frets, so I came up with this other thing. So, so on this guitar, and then the very last chord would be, would just be that A minor, that A minor, and then I might do, uh, homage to, to John McLaughlin. So so what I did, did on, on this arrangement, so on that very last chord, I'm on B flat, let's see, I'm on B flat, right here. Uh, natural harmonics. So, it, it's, they're both okay. I, I, I kind of, in some ways, I kind of... I kind of like that better, but that that's kind of a hard chord to grab if you only have if if your guitar only goes up to C and you might and if, if you don't have a cutaway, it could be a little bit uh, a little bit problematic. All right, I think at this point, um, I think I'll just I think I'll just go ahead uh, move the mic out of the way and just just play through the whole arrangement um, with with some embellishments. Um, Okay, I think that'll be it for today. Okay, uh, thanks for for listening. Hopefully, you found some uh, some interest uh, interesting uh, devices here and learning this beautiful song, Crystal Silence. I'd re highly recommend checking out uh, Chick Corea, uh, Return to Forever. It's a it's just the album's called Return to Forever, and there's a great version of this. Um, Joe Farrell playing uh, soprano sax and just you know. Just you know, just ama amazing play, and you know, that whole album uh, has some great playing on Stanley Clark, uh, you know, you know, knocking it out of the ballpark, um, things like that. Okay, thanks for watching and listening. Here it goes, Crystal Silence uh, performance. We'll see what we'll see what comes out. <laughs>